Hello and welcome my partners in crime. And you know, I always say that in the best possible way. So this is Murder Mornings with us, with MA. Okay, Murder Analyzed. And the reason we've done this is because we have so many comments. Really. We do. I could do a job just doing these comments, really. And um, so what we've decided to do is do question and answers and also take, uh, we've gone through all your sort of comments and now we sort of put them all together and, and everything. But I want to just thank every one of you for leaving a comment uh, on every case. I mean, this. I, I, I go through and there's we just do try absolutely, and go them, yeah, so, so many. many. So and thank you, keep doing it because now we still go through and I've got Leanne going through and I've got other people going through yeah. and we go through and we then take the general sort of gist of what you want to know, or what you're saying and stuff, mm -hmm. but we really appreciate it, we really do. So listen, before I start with anything else, I have to say to you that I have been saying that I want to get up to 100,000 subscribers. And I know it seems a big jump from 10,000 to 100,000 subscribers. But when you think that we was at 100 subscribers, yeah. 100 in February, and we are now on over 10,000, and that is all to do with you, really. I don't think that 100,000 is not realistic at all. No. So, you know what to do? Smash that like button, hit it, put this notification bell, click that so you get notifications of the uploads of the videos, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell people about us, and I know someone actually, um, I, I think she's an Irish lady, I have to find her comment, and she said I've told six people to subscribe to you. Thank you, right? Thank you for that. That is amazing, and we appreciate every one of you. So this is one of the reasons why we wanted to do this and I called it murder morning because I thought that's all we ever talk about is murder anyway. In, uh, especially in my house. So anyway, let's have a look, Taylor, at your um, what we've got. So the way that um, I've organised these questions is that I've gone through a lot of comments. Um, I've gone through um, comments on our Facebook and um, on our YouTube to try and find um, similar questions and I've kind of grouped them together and found a wording that kind of works. So hopefully um, there'll be um, answers to whatever the question, yeah. uh, whatever the questions were asked um, and we'll find that out. But if you do have um, any more questions or your question wasn't answered or um, wasn't featured here, do go and leave a comment on our uh, Murder Morning post so that we can see it and yeah. we'll put it in for next time. Yeah. And actually, as someone did comment, so I haven't got either um, Instagram or Facebook, leave them on here on YouTube. Yeah. This is our main one, really. The others are like backups to what yeah. we use, really, for advertising and stuff. But we go through them. So, yeah, yeah. YouTube is, is great, actually, to yeah. put it on there. On. And we okay. do have the morning uh, Murder Morning post on the YouTube as well, don't we? Yes. Yeah, and you'll be seeing lots more of them. Yeah, so our so first going question um, was, was a group of people, um, lots of different questions, but I've grouped them together, um, who want to know how can we, the public, um, change the law system, um, or can we do anything to, uh, in regards to sentence, or how do we make this change when things aren't, yeah. are very clearly not being dumped on. And we have a lot of this on sentencing, because let's be honest, all right, the UK is not great on its sentencing, is it? We're very, very lenient compared to the rest of the world and especially compared to America. And a lot of these comments that we have from the Americans and Hello America is, um, is about how lenient we are. But when, to answer that question, we live in a democracy, you see, and so we appoint, don't we, our, um, you know, <laughs> local people, you yeah, know, local like government. government and stuff, and then we have the government that we vote in. Now, the government want to do what you want it to do, it, or it wants to be seen to be doing what you want it to, to do. So the only way that you can change the laws and make them more stricter and harder, right, really on these perpetrators, okay. is to continually um, put it out there. I think with Christy, we have uh, Christy's case. 
we have the petition that's out there. Petitions do show that the public are concerned about something, that they want something changed, and they do listen. Because listen, these people in our government, you know, we have these politicians, they want to be voted in. No one's going to vote in someone that is so lenient on um, criminals like this. So it's about public opinion. It's about having your voice heard. And whether that's leaving comments on here like this or signing petitions or, you know, writing open letters because a lot of people write open letters yeah, and write stuff. Write to the local council. Yeah, write to your local councils. Write, you can, even, you know, CPS, all of these are public bodies, okay? And they are interested uh, in your point of view because no one wants to lose their job. And the other thing what they're worried about is a backlash. Now, when CPS, when you're charged with a crime, it's the police's job to investigate that crime, okay, and get everything together. Then all the evidence they've got then goes to the CPS, and it is for their decision to whether that person is charged or not, right? So that's the first point. Not everybody that the police arrest um, actually make it to court. There's a few reasons for that. Now, the CPS look at um, crime is 50-50, um, really, the probability. Of one, is it in the best interest of the public to pursue that case and take it to court at the expense as well as a public interest? And two, is there the probability that you're going to get a win from that case because you can't spend millions of pounds on a case where there's no case to answer and you're going to take it to court and it's going to fail, okay? And the because the economy we live in today, this is even the threshold to get certain of these cases through is difficult. So you'll see the police, especially these paedophile cases and stuff, they really, really push the police to get these to call. They go to call and they get off or they get a month or they get, you know, time served or nine months for, you know, <laughs> terrible crimes. So it's about you making your voices heard by many different ways mm. and you know, no matter what country you live in you know we live in a world that we have a voice and we should be able to use it because we are you know especially in your local community and I think this is what got me with Christie's case especially because it sticks in my mind is that they tried to gag them they tried to put a gag order in place on a domestic homicide case mm. it's shocking it's absolutely shocking you know, because of why? Why? I mean, he could have got a lot more years than he got. He got 22 years and 58 days, and I've said this before about the 58 day thing, how it works out like that. Because, if, you know, he, they didn't have to go and look for him. Uh, they didn't have to spend a lot of money on a, on a case. So he gets time, you know, or percentages to cough. It's unfair because the man is a killer. Mm. And so it, there shouldn't be any percentages off. It's like an incentive, you know, for them to, you know, do the right thing. It's not really, is it, when you've killed someone. But with the law in this country, it's terrible. Now, the worst thing about the law in this country is when we actually do put these people in prison, when we actually do do something, and this is uh, Colin Pitchfork's case I'm talking about now, and this case is coming out, or the update, is coming out or will be out by the time you watch this video. Now, we have a serial killer, right, mm. who murdered, raped and murdered two 15-year-olds in the 80s. He was sentenced to 30 years, then on appeal it dropped to 28 years. In 2016 he was moved to an open, or no, in 2016 he went up for parole. He shouldn't have even got parole, but he did. He went up for parole and he was refused parole in 2016. 2017 then, he was then moved to an open prison and allowed out on day release, right? And we're talking about someone that's killed someone here, two people, what we know of, what we know of. Also, he'd been a flasher <laughs> to over a thousand women, a thousand women, until he escalated to murder. And on the 7th of June this year, this man was released out. Now this is the parole board. So we have the police that have fought and fought and fought to find this man. And this was the first case with DNA. 
So we put all this effort in, don't we? And the police put all this effort in, and the public put all this effort in, because how that case come about was the police put out for people to give their DNA. It was voluntary, people walked in. Thousands of people did it, I think over 5,000 people did it mm. with that one. But what are we saying to criminals then? You know, what are we saying about our justice system? This man should never been released. The problem is with this man now, and our justice system is, we've released someone that they know is a killer. He's a manipulator, psychopath. That's what he is. He's out. So, now we've educated him. He's out there. The next time he ain't going to dump the body on the side of the road, he's going to hide the body. And so this is what really pisses me off, and I'm going to say, about our justice system. Because that parole board have got too much power. Now we all know what Colin Pitchfork is. He knows what he is. And this is what really annoys me, because someone is probably going to lose their life because of the actions of some do-gooders sitting on a parole board. Mm. And so the, just, this justice system, and I will be writing open letters, and I will be, you know, petitioning and saying, bring him back. He shouldn't be on life license. He should be in prison. That's how we change. That's how we change. We change through doing awareness of things like this. We change through publicly saying, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. And our sentences isn't long enough. People are getting away with murder, literally. That's what they're doing. So in that case, really, you know, you have MPs, you have local councillors, use them, write to them, demand justice, demand for change. And that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. That kind of um, goes into my next um, question. Um, how do we raise awareness um, for these issues? And yeah, I, yeah, how we raise awareness is similar to what I've said, I yeah. think. You know, there's a, and people have said, and I've seen a lot of comments on here, have said, I'm so glad you took on case of domestic abuse and homicide and different things like this because you're showing awareness and that to a sort of a taboo thing. People don't like to speak about it. You know, I think we have to talk mm. because I, I know people don't. It's got to become normalised normalized because actually, you know, it is normal. You know, it happens to a lot of people. people. A lot more than you think. I mean, I was listening to one of them come driving around here today and another person's just been murdered, you know. And the, the thing is with murder or any of these cases, and especially when we talk about paedophiles or female paedophiles or, or, or whatever, um, you know, domestic abuse or all this, these are all issues that are out there mm -hmm. in the real world. And grooming, I think we're going to go into the grooming bit online stuff because some people have asked about, about that. But if we don't say, if we don't say it, and we don't spread it out, and we don't do the posters that we do, and the ads that I do, and the t-shirts that we're gonna do, people won't understand or won't know. People only know about something when you tell them. Mm. And some people, and I'm not gonna say ignorant, because a lot of people don't like the news, they don't like to watch it, they think, you know, they have this a world they live in and they feel they're protected because they don't really look at what's going on, yeah. okay? And for some people, that's how they cope with this terror that we are living with. Peppa! And so I think if we, the more we talk, the more we're aware, the more we're not scared to talk about the issues that are sometimes, you know, um, terrible to talk about. You know, we have to do it. We have to make sure that the only way is not to be quiet. You have to be loud. You have to be. So the other thing I want to talk about just quickly before we go, because I don't think it's in there, is that we've had a lot of cases where we've had online crime or online grooming. Um, and I think we have the Canadian case. We've had a few cases of this online grooming. And a lot of you have said, how do we protect our children? Um, listen, kids are pickled, yeah. you know, and I've had three of them, and I've got four granddaughters, and it's very difficult because we live in this social age. We live in our world, which is like virtual, isn't it, really, when you really think about it. And I think it's to talk to your children. They have to know what's going on. You haven't mm. got to tell them the graphic details because they sort of already understand. I think we need to give our especially the teenagers, a lot more credit. 
But I heard someone, one of the kids was saying, you know, um, not on here, the other day, about how someone in their school, um, the girl was receiving indecent images from another boy. Mm. It was her age. It's about education, and I say this about in these schools. These kids, when you upload something, whether you think it's private or not, all right? Mm. It's not private. Because once someone decides to put that out there, it's out there forever. Mm. And it can be spread and spread and spread. And so it's about educating our children, making them aware of the long-term consequences, not so much now, mm. right? And we have a lot of these kids that don't care, you know, they, they don't care yeah. what goes out there. But they may care 10 years down the line when these things are out there. But as for online grooming, I think children should be monitored they should have their parental guidance then mm -hmm. on their thing. When you accept someone, whether you think they're a friend or not, because when you accept someone, their friends, isn't it, can also see. Yeah. So it's not just that person you have to be careful about, it's the others that they may not be aware that they've accepted, that's not who they seem to be. Mm -hmm. We've had you know, paedophiles on here that have pretended to be a 12 year old yeah, child, yeah. right? And um, this is what's happening. And we live in an age of social media and we need to be really careful. But it's about educating. Mm. It, listen, this isn't going anywhere. Social yeah. media is going nowhere. And you hear these people say, well, this won't last long. Then you change. No, I'm telling you now, this is only ever gonna get worse. It's gonna get worse, but so we have to be on it. And the only way you can be on it is to educate your children and do things in schools. And I think we are looking at, at like, when we was talking before. It's difficult for us because, yes, I teach, but I teach adults. And so when you teach adults, they've already well did, they're aware they're over 18, well, some of them were. Some of them are a bit younger, depending. But they're there to do law, or they're there to do criminology or psychology. They're there. They understand. So for us to do something, I think the best people to teach your children about online grooming or abuse or whatever's going on is you. Mm. Is you. Because you know your child. And listen, kids will lie, right? They do. And they're going to say, oh no, you know, don't worry, I understand, I understand. Just do it nicely, and I think because no child wants to be told, this is the issue, isn't it? No one wants to be told. Yeah, I think the understanding is probably the best yeah. way about it. If you, in my experience, being young once. Yeah, um, I, <laughs> I was young once. And I, if somebody said, no, no, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, then that's on your mind, and you yeah. don't understand. Yeah. Why, why you can't do you it you can't do yeah. it you've just been told that you shouldn't be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that um and i think that the the way that it needs to come about this understanding is gently and with yeah with genuine concern, you know, concern. and um i think if if it comes in too strong then maybe Perhaps yeah. children and I, yeah, are more likely and I, to I hide think, it. I mean, some of them on here have already been very young as well. Yeah. And I think uh, you have a, you have to think of your child because a lot of kids like to be popular. They want to be part of a group, mm -hmm. right? So it's a natural thing, isn't it? And I think with social media, that that groups changed. I mean, when I was a kid, listen, we didn't have mobile phones or anything. Lucky to have a bloody house phone actually. Um, I don't think we did for years. I'm quite old. But, um, you know, we didn't have mobile phones. I remember getting my first mobile phone. Actually, I remember doing my first email. That's how old I am. But, um, so I think for today's kids, it's different because that social interaction is different. This is their social interaction. This isn't. You know, it's not. This form of communication is different to what I was brought up with and people of my age. And this is also then very difficult for us to then start talking to kids about this sort of thing and how to educate them. Because I'm a traditional educator, really. Mm. You know, I teach yeah. law. 
and unless you're gonna you know <laughs> you want to know law you know and you're you're gonna sit there and you're gonna study and work and work and work it, it it's um it's a different kettle of fish we i've got it different is. minds and we all say this yeah my mind works differently you know and i think lawyers are we're different people so and because i'm at that older age i expect to say something and then the kids have got it that sort of thing yeah. this i've had to get used to listen before i started this i didn't know what youtube was did i <laughs> so yeah. i think my best advice is firstly to, to talk to your own children or start your own sort of groups with your friends of how you can do it as a group to educate your children yeah. and then maybe approach the school and say listen what can be done what is being done to this online or this social you know to be a bully enemy of everything yeah. going on now i think do your own community first i think that's the best thing to do start from home and sort of work your way out and you'll do great things yeah. so that does kind of link into the ne next question so other than um the children part which we yeah. uh, online we've just said but um how do we stay safe in this kind of environment and with these issues going on how what with online even online um, well, online so general, generally um with some of the cases we've talked about we've talked about stalking we've talked yeah. about things like that how do we stay domestic violence things like that how do we stay safe and keep ourselves safe from these issues i think especially with stalking and especially online stalkers listen stalking is a terrible thing and can end in, in a variety of ways okay i think we need to be aware of when we put things up especially online mm. you know um we don't always know everything about everyone we know someone may come across online as different to what they are they may lie you know, most of the time you know, there's dating sites and things and i actually had known someone um, that had met someone online, gone out for a day with them only once and decided that it wasn't for her, it was, certainly wasn't for her. And she was only a young girl actually. Yeah. And um, she was telling me and then the next day he started parking outside her house and, um, <laughs> you know, mm. but I said to her, well, how did you know where you lived? Mm. You only just met this person online. You've only met him then one day. He seems to know a lot about you for that one day. So you have decided that he's not for you. But he, he obviously hasn't decided that you are not for him. And it took her a long time, months actually, to keep a distance. She had to shut her Facebooks down and uh, mm. social media down and keep herself quiet after one day. So I think the best thing is to be aware about what you're putting out there, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to that, and if that this is online, don't tell people too much, especially if you're doing online dating and stuff, mm -hmm. until you really know who they are, because we've had many cases on here. And as I said to you, what, what you may see on the screen is not actually what's mm -hmm. really going on behind closed doors. I think a big part of it as well is telling people so if you get this funny feeling if you've only just met this person once and they start parking outside your house let people know yeah. tell them say i don't feel comfortable no. with this At somebody's least, doing somebody's yeah. parking outside my house making sure that people are aware where you are what kind yeah. of situation you're in yeah. um taking the measures to keep yourself safe yeah. in that situation where you and are. i mean we have okay we have got stalking those in this country all right we have and uh, um, sometimes though it's not even about the law is it it's about how they're enforced and how not only how the police sort because we've had cases on here where we've actually had victims that have been fined you know because they said they were wasting police time and stuff now so it's about the perception isn't it it's about the understanding from the police officers and and stuff mm -hmm. and it's most police officers are very very good right but there are a few that are not and then we have though the perpetrator themselves so you can do whatever you can to try and stop this perpetrator from um seeing what you're doing everything else do you know but you're talking about the mind and there's different characteristics 
when it comes to people that stalk and stuff like that. They have different characteristics. And each, this is why I will say, each case like this is an individual case. There's no one answer. Absolutely, there's no one answer at all for anyone that's being stalked. You need to seek professional help, really. Go to the police, do what you need to do. Do not answer them. Do not respond. Mm. Because a negative response is a response. Mm. They're not always hearing how you're saying it. They're hearing what they want to hear. So an attention-seeking stalker is someone that you may know has met you, won't leave you alone, this sort of thing. So any attention to them is attention. But then you have a predatory stalker and there's someone you may not even know that's stalking you and they're the most dangerous. So each thing with this, mm -hmm. to protect yourself is no limit what you're doing online for your privacy. Make your sure share. your privacy is on. Who, you know, this sort of thing. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult one because, yeah. you know, we live all our lives, don't we? Our lives are out there, aren't they? And um, but really do not respond and contact the police and make it known keep notes keep diaries record if you have to you need evidence and you need evidence because then these stalking laws can be enforced much more quickly and also, it can save you also i would say if you also don't stay quiet if you've got a friend or someone who maybe who you feel oh that might be a little bit too far like yeah. maybe you shouldn't go around there maybe you shouldn't do yeah. this or you've got a funny feeling that somebody you know yeah. or a friend or a family that member a feeling is, is usually right you know make sure that you make that known and speak up and tell them that's maybe not okay maybe don't take that step if you've got children educate them about um the dangers of stalking but also how to respect um, and again, I think it all comes down to education. Boundaries. Yeah, in school, you're listen. You're always going to have people because you're going to have stalkers, and there's another sort of stalker, and we haven't really mentioned much about them sort of stalkers that are just socially inept. They don't understand what they're doing is harmful or <laughs> making you feel uncomfortable, and they are usually the ones that are quite harmless. Okay, and once they're told, they will then usually back off and. So I'm sorry I didn't use that. So I think the thing is to be aware, to be aware of what you're pushing out there. And um, if you are being stalked, then you seek help, but and you do not respond at all. Yeah. That would be my thing. Uh, the next question is slightly more personal. It's what uh, made slash inspired you to make this channel? Um, Lacey. <laughs> And, and I've, I've told you, I've been on it right from the beginning, haven't I? You can hear pets, can't you, walking across the board. Um, listen, Murder Analyze was designed really, um, I babysat for Lacey when your mum mm -hmm. and you lot all went away on your holiday. And she wanted to always, she's a gamer, isn't yeah. she? Right? And you're a gamer, aren't you yeah. as well, right? <laughs> and, but, but Lacey's autistic. And a lot of you have seen Lacey. Um, doing different things and Lacey didn't feel confident and she wanted to have a YouTube channel right that's what she wanted wasn't it yeah I want to have a YouTube channel and I can't do it um, I can't do that in front of camera and I think she's actually got a lot better now yeah. hasn't she with stuff um, and I said to her well I don't actually know what YouTube is really you know, being honest with you you know I don't I didn't I didn't did I you no. could say to me you know I mean, I love it now, don't get me wrong. I can't believe I, I, I left it there late journey. in my life. It was a journey. <laughs> it was a journey so, that we've yeah, gone through. Yeah, and she said, and I said to her, well, I can't just do something because you want me to do it. I can't do about gaming and stuff because it's not me. I actually don't play games, do I? No. I, you know, my attitude yeah. with games is, is, you know, I know your D&D, &D, you love. D&D, you, you &D, D yeah. 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 But Lacey was... We do play video and games video as well. games. And then it, even so. Lacey, I think when she was 9 or 10, she was actually... Because I, I don't know if it's her being autistic or is it just that she's really good at this, you know, air programming and different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was really good. And I mean, I remember once when I was working, teaching, I think the bloke from, what's it called, um, who designed um, Minecraft, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. 
came in to do a talk and I just said to Lacey, because she's mad on Minecraft, do you want to come and meet him? You know, well, I can't remember who it was now. I mean, this, this, this I don't know. Anyway, so he wrote a book and everything. Now this man, you know, I mean, his intelligence, his intelligence was way above me. And then, so I brought Lacey in and they started talking. And I'm not joking, you had, you know, older people that are doing, you know, online degrees and, you know, yeah. degrees for, you know, computer science and stuff like this. Lacey sort of wiped them all out to tell her the truth. And him and her started to talk about the programming and this, that and the other. Yeah. And it showed me then I sort of stood back and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, there's something different about this child. So Lacey loves it. She loves the behind the scenes stuff. And, but she wanted to create something, but gaming was not for me. So she said, I want your brain now. So I said, then we'll have to do something to do with the law, because mm. that's I mean, what I do. True crime and So I like said, that. and we love true, I mean, all of you yeah. have been brought up in my home with um, true crime, really, because I believe that even my grandchildren, all of them, I have to be aware of what's going on out there because it's about protecting you. If you're aware of something, you're much easier mm. to stop things happening. You're more aware when you walk down the street at night who's around, what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a hoodie up, earphones in, yeah. so someone can drag you off into a bloody field or whatever. That's, they've been brought up with it. And mm. I, I think this is what Lacey picked up on. So I said to her, listen, okay, we're we do something and within 10 minutes she had chosen to know Murder Analyzed. She had set it all up and she said we've now got a YouTube channel. And that was the beginning. And that was the beginning. But it took me a year actually, I think, before I uploaded, didn't it? Yeah. Because I had to we learn about it. Yeah. We learned cameras, we learned lighting. We're still always learning. Always. always. I'm, I'm constantly learning. And so, yes, yeah, so now I do do... I write anyway, I've always wrote and write loads. Yeah. I write and write and write. And so um, I write, I produce, I um, film, I edit, <laughs> and uh, I do a lot, yeah. really. But what a fantastic job to have, it really. Is, it really is. Really, I'd, I'd tell anyone, just do it. Go for it, don't hold back. Yeah. And next question, do we have a Twitter, Facebook or Instagram? Oh, well, listen, <laughs> I've just given you an idea, haven't I, of how bad I am. And I think what it is with me, I'm not really on my phone a lot. I know all you lot are, they're constantly on their phones and I go mad. You know, we're going out for a meal and they're all my kids. My girls are like this with their phones. I'm like, how embarrassing, how rude of you. We've come out. And you're all sitting there on your phones doing this, that and the other. So I make them put them down. So that's how I usually was with this sort of technology. One, I've always had Facebook, but really, when do I ever go on Facebook? Mm. I've got more on it now on my other one than, than ever. Uh, um, I have had Instagram, mm. but I hadn't used it in ages. And then mm. they set one up and actually Keone runs all the social, me social media side of it because <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> now, Twitter, I have heard of. And I think we are going to do that, aren't yeah. we, as well. So we do have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have YouTube and now. And We're there's other things I think that Lacey's got up with, because we write a lot. So there's different stuff. I think yeah. she's got different stuff, is it, um, that we're on as well. And plus we also have uh, Spotify, Spotify um, which is, mm. I don't think it's an interactive podcast yet, because I no. just upload my things. But in the end it will, when I have more time, um, and <coughs> these restrictions go, we will um, definitely have more interactive podcasts as well on that. Actually, also videos, more interactive, where you're having guest people. Okay. Um, what is our members' lounge? Now, our members' lounge is a private lounge, and it costs, at the moment, tier one is uh, Partners in Crime, and it costs 4 99 per month. Now, in that, they have exclusive videos and other benefits will go with that. They also have behind the scenes footage and stuff. And I do upload a lot. And I've said before, um, when we do these sort of members lounges, is that we make sure that they get a lot for their money. Um, we want to make sure. Now, their videos at the moment are restricted just 
to then mail this. That means they're not released anywhere else. And I think for that for a while that's probably going to stay yeah, the same. That's why. But yeah, the same way. Um, and it depends. And I think now we have got members. Um, I like to know what my members want. So I want. I, they're very interactive. Actually, we've got absolutely fantastic, um, haven't we? Yeah. Partners in crime members into our members lounge, and um, and so I would listen to them if they feel what needs to be changed or we can do something else. We will work with them as well. We like to give value for money I think yeah you know we don't think we deserve anything and what that does is then assist me to run it doesn't um, <laughs> I, you know there's no way it's gonna run this site I, I'm telling you now because we are also restricted with ads I've noticed that a few ads have started to yeah. go on now uh, certain ones but you know I won't change my content just for an ad I won't yeah. so and you know, it does help you, us go and do things down the line. Down the line, yeah. You know, you know, I brought a load of equipment and stuff. You know, at the moment, I think, I think I've spent personally about eight thousand mm. pounds. I'd say that. And of course, you know, with any, and this is a business, so you know, really, um, you know, I'm a businesswoman. That's what I do. And so, and it's seen as that you can hear Pepper out there. It was her birthday yesterday. So listen, I'm a businesswoman and we run it as a business, but it's not just my business. Each of the four grandchildren have a share in Murder Analyzed, mm. okay? And they each do something for that share. So any money that we get in from that members lounge, whatever else, is goes towards the upkeep and the running of that. Plus, this is not my only job. I have a lot of other things I have to do. Even though I am reducing them a little bit now because I actually find that this is much more interesting. Yeah. And but there's no way at the moment that I, I, I would um, earn enough money to <laughs> live off it. But anything is great. So that's about the members lounge. Yeah. Um, will you begin to cover unsolved or cold cases? Listen, I love cold cases. I do. I love them. I think they're absolutely fascinating. I. I I, I just love to work and if there's anyone out there that works you know in forensics um, you know like because the problem is now is what's happening now with cold cases is now when we have to be say about let's get DNA and sort it out DNA analysis is so expensive yeah so expensive so when you're looking at, at a cold case now with the advances in DNA you can do so much but it comes down to money so a lot of cases could be solved but it comes down to money. And um, so I love to, I, I hate to not know, but I like to give examples of what could be. So yes, I'm gonna find cases, cold cases, unsolved cases, where we could have a clue maybe of what has happened. Mm. You know, because I hate to tell a case and then there's no ending. You have to, you know, yeah. it's frustrating, it's frustrating for me, but I will do some. But it's about merely the cases that I'm looking to do where there, there is sort of scenarios that could have happened. Mm. They're the ones. And if we just had loads of money, uh, endless amounts of money, because this is what DNA is going to cost us to get done. You know, and if you're looking actually then your family genealogy, genealogy, yeah. genealogy, sorry. And you find, so, and you've got enough DNA somewhere you can track now, but it costs an awful lot of money. Mm. It really does. And there isn't many you know, police agencies out there that's going to pay that sort of money. Yeah. Really for a private, you know, um, team to do that. So yes, we'll be looking into them because I think variety is good. Um, I do and I think, you know, the problem is, isn't it, there's, there's uh, so many, so many unsolved murders. But yeah. some are, and I think as we've, and I sort of said about another picture for case and when he came out, that was the DNA, that's when the database started from that case and a lot of cases have been solved from that so where they collected the DNA and now any you know some of the cold cases are starting to be but that's only because they've already got their DNA mm. on the database but if they have they're not on the database it's very difficult very difficult yeah and finally our final question today um when will the 10k party be and uh, what will it be about okay the 10k party will be on the 6th of August 
Um, we wanted to make sure that every, all the restrictions were lifted and that everyone was going to be safe um, and all the people that attend the party. It will be a live stream. Um, we've also got to work out um, the live, we're going to have a couple of test runs with live streams. They're not going to go live, but we will te uh, test run That's the their uh, technology, me out <laughs> um, the technology and um, making sure that it all works so that we can do. There is no time announced yet. We will let you know um, closer to the time, more of the details. But we will have, we're going to have a party and we're also going to be, Pam is barking again, we're also going to be um, launching our merch um, on that day, on the party. Um, so that will be wonderful to celebrate a wonderful 10k and 10k of you and it's just amazing. Thank you so much. We're going to have, um, yeah, the live stream going from a certain time. Um, we're not sure quite how long it will be yet, we'll but we will let you know. Day, we'll do the timing. Here's we better. will let you know. Um, and yeah, so it should be a wonderful time. We're yeah. all looking really forward to it. Listen, we're a party family. I've said this before. We love a party. And, you know, we was on 100 subscribers in February. Mm -hmm. Now we're on 10,000 plus. Now, it's amazing. You know, I remember saying actually to Lexi when we had eight subscribers. I said, oh Lex, this is my youngest friend. I've got eight subscribers. <laughs> She's like, oh Nan, so good for you, I'm so pleased. And now, you know, in February to be at a hundred and then now to be at ten thousand plus. It's just great. It's just great. So we want to celebrate it. And as I keep saying to you, you know, we want to get to the 100,000 and I know we can do it because if we can start off at 100 we can. and get to here, we can do the 100,000 and it's only because of you that we can do it. So here we go. You know what to do, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You can hit that subscribe button, you can tell people about us, you can pass this, you know, pass this information on. You can smash that like button, you can hit that bell. You know the little bell, which I never knew what it was for. For ages, I never knew what it was for. It's about the notifications when the videos are coming out. Now I have changed the videos a little bit. I've been bringing out about two or three at a weekend, and you know, I, I think you know, Friday, Saturday night, it's good to have a lot because I've got someone here, and what's her name that's been watched? I have to just say I can't, I can't see it without my glasses. So let me look. These are my bingo glasses, by the way. My other ones are. <laughs> Oh gosh, I have a game bingo. Uh, oh, someone did say that she was um, she was just binge watching, wasn't she, Taylor? And I just yeah. thought it was amazing. But um, listen, thank you. You know, so listen. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the um, bell. Get our notifications. Talk about us. Spread our videos out there, especially the ones that we're trying to build awareness for. Sign Christie's petition. It's there, and we'll we'll put some links up in and the, the yeah, description. and we'll put a link in the description because we need this signed to get this man more time. And then Christy, I'm talking about, is um, she was murdered in 2021, actually. So it's a very new case, and she was stabbed 17 times in the face by her partner. So this is what they call a homicide, you know, a domestic mm -hmm. homicide. Okay. Uh, and he got 22 years and 58 days, so I want you to sign this petition that's out there from her family and her friends and her community because they don't believe that that's enough time because this was a premeditated murder of a young girl in front of her three children. So it's really important that I keep getting this case out there. So anyway, you know what to do, I told you to do all that. You can follow us on Facebook, you can follow us on Instagram, you will soon be able to follow us on Twitter. And yeah. set it all up. You can hear this on, um, should I do a podcast on this? Yes, I will do the podcast on this. You'll hear that one there. And this weekend, you will be up to around 100 cases because we have 93 at the moment and there'll be about seven uploads, probably including this one this weekend. So enjoy my binge watches and my partners in crime. So, from Taylor. Hiya. <laughs> uh, stay safe. Um, be well, and until the next time, bye-bye. <laughs>